everybody. Um, here we are, and we've been posted in three public places and on the website and emailed the interested parties so we can move move forward with this. We'll start off with the um, minutes from the um, prior April 25th meeting. And do you guys see any corrections you want to make on that? We did have to make a correction to our executive. The executive session. Executive session. I wrote yep. that in. Okay, You're this is saying the, April 25th. That says that's April That's special 11th. select board Okay, that's meeting. a special one. No. This is no, the regular no. meeting. No, this is no. May 6th. This is special this select says, board meeting. This says April 11th yeah. Yeah. on the top. So okay, we need so to make that adjustment, that, too. That too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd move to approve with the proper date and with the, um, the um, in and out of the executive session. I second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. What was the date on that? Um, you know. That would be 25th, the 25th, April 25th. And then we also have the meetings from the May 6th special meeting minutes. And um, I saw no errors. I didn't either. So I'd move to approve those. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Got those in there. Okay. And we, um, I don't see a special guest, Lieutenant Hugh O'Donnell okay. no. or Aaron Lavelle. Nope. nope. So um, I see um, Norm, you'd like to speak at the meeting. Why don't you um, step right up and. So, so I got to step up? No, you don't have to step up. Just speak up. Yeah. What happened to everybody? Everybody, the other set up on his chair, nobody shows up. Yeah. Well, it's, um, <laughs> it's kind of nice it's a outside. Nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I just have a few uh, recreation department things that I wanted to ask uh, for your approval. I, I know I'm not on the uh, official agenda, so uh, I guess you guys have time to think about it. Um, starting with the tennis courts, um, we've gotten um, a few a few people have contacted me about uh, getting pickleball going. Um, they're, they're interested in a new sport, a new rage going around the country it called is. pickleball which mm -hmm. is basically a smaller version of tennis so it's some sort of hybrid between tennis and ping pong and horseware and badminton so I basically played on a smaller um court um but it can be a, a lot of um courts these days are sort of hybridizing where they're painting the uh lines right on the um uh, tennis court <clears throat> and, and so it's multi-purpose, so we can get as much interest as possible, um, either through pickleball or tennis. And um, that pickleball is definitely picking up throughout the country. It's great for the older folks who don't run as fast, don't move so good. And uh, also the uh, kids, I, I think it's great for kids. Um, it's like kids programs or something like that. Um, with Perhaps the hope of them graduating into tennis is sort of sort of be a strategy of fostering, you know, the young people to sort of continue tennis or, or stay at pickleball, and sort of for the post tennis players to continue on the court in a less environment. Could you explain what the difference is between, aside from being a smaller court, what's what's the difference between is it a racket? It's, it's a wooden pedal. It's almost like a ping pong pedal, like a larger ping pong pedal it has little holes in it. Uh, the ball is uh, sort of a large wiffle ball, sort of a large, sturdy wiffle ball, and you have to extend. Um, you, you don't really like hit like this, like a ping pong. Uh, Ping pong racket, uh, ping pong paddle, um, but you have to extend it because the wiffle ball doesn't have much bounce. You have to sort of hit it pretty good, so you get some good arm exercise. And your serving is underhanded serving, is that right? Yeah, underhand serving, but during the game you can you know go sideways or overhand. Um, so is it a smaller court because the ball doesn't fly as far? Yeah, it's twenty feet across. I do have a way out for you. Paddles like so a racquetball. They, they're not apt to go in the river. 
No, no. That's... <laughs> Hardly goes over the net. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good. Very far, right. So the blue lines <laughs> are, the are the um. Yeah, I'm, I'm proposing to paint the blue lines in here. Pretty much, we use the same net. Uh, officially, a pickleball net is two inches lower than a tennis ball net, you know, thirty-six to thirty-four feet. But I think for our purposes, it's um, fine using the tennis net. Any serious pickleball players can sort of band the net down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we at, up at Greyhawk, we painted pickleball um, lines over there. We, we actually used a corner of the tennis. We actually had this whole court sitting in the corner, and, and we used our own pickleball net. And it, the, the standalone net was sort of a, just a big pain in the keister. Um, and I think really just sort of multi-purposing the tennis net is uh, just an easier, better thing than the ball. Um, and the, the colors of the paint would be um, sort of inobtrusive to pickle to tennis players, right? With a tennis that uses the white lines. Um, I, th I think um, in the case of art courts, it's light blue in the court. So I would paint like a darker blue for the pickleball. So you have the contrast between the white tennis lines and the darker blue pickleball lines. That diagram is a little more confusing with white and light blue over a darker. Um, but um, that's what I'm looking at. I'd be, we were considering um, you know, getting it professionally done, but it's I think about six or 700 bucks. And um, I think you know, me and a couple other people would have the talent to make, make it look good enough. You know, we can make it look pretty sharp. We use tape. There's yeah. pickleball kits out there, actually. They're, you know, pretty, it's, it's negligibly priced. It's a way to introduce the uh, you know new sport to the community, and there has been I have been taking some calls for hey let's get pickleball going. Um, you know, no cost to the town, um, just a few blue lines on the on the, on the town square. property, the town mm -hmm. squares. So. Would you do anything to promote this to get the word out? Um, Front porch you know, forum. Could put up flyers <laughs> Martha on the on the yeah, app. Uh, yeah, yeah. Martha could put it up. Uh, and well, it comes to us. Since there's discussion, just one yeah. discussion about um, a softball tournament on July second. Maybe you could start up a pickleball tournament. Yeah, yeah. But well, we do have a tennis tournament on July fourth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the ball tournament, you know, let's, let's see if they get to, let's see, let's, you know, try, we have a little <laughs> tiny snowball at the top of the mountain, let's just see how big it gets as it goes uh -huh. down. Um, but, uh, as I said, uh, one, one thing is the library actually has pickleball paddles that they um, mm -hmm. rent out for free. Mm -hmm. Martha. So they can get if somebody doesn't right. they rent them out for free. Yeah. Them, yeah. Them, whatever yeah. Them. Uh, and, uh, but we were also suggesting that if people were interested in this, that they should buy their own paddle and arrive on the tennis court the same way they do with their tennis racket and can of balls. You mm -hmm. think so? Which yeah. will be available at the hardware store. <laughs> Wait, can't say that. Um, so um, you could even carry boards. So since it's not on the agenda or it wasn't posted, we can't make. It I see no reason why there'd be a problem with this. But this will be good. We'll put it out there. It can be in the paper, and everyone that goes home yeah, and this is part of your publicity. watches the select board meetings when we get feedback. But I'd be very surprised if there was much. Um, push back on that yeah, so we be. think we could you know tentatively say sure and then we can make an official decision at the next meeting when we have it on the agenda one properly we would encourage um, people okay. to, to um just one second let us know their their pleasure let us know if they're yeah. interested in doing it yeah so and martha can help with that yeah 
We don't want to get in a pickle fight. We don't. <laughs> Or a ball either. Yeah, yeah. Pickle ball. Yeah. Um, so you got that, Martha? Yeah, I just was going to tell Norm. Um, I didn't know that there was going to be a tennis tournament this. So if you could get in touch with me, um, I'm sometime um, in the next day or two. I'm getting the letter ready to go out by the end of this week, if possible, and I could include it in that invitation letter that I send out to people who were, who participate in the parade. And of course, later on, when it gets closer to the date, I uh, can put it in news articles, et cetera. And if you wanted to do a separate article about pickleball, maybe we could, why not? So, yeah. you know, just, um, just get in touch with me. I'm sorry to interrupt here. I'll, I'll uh, Evelyn wait. might be the most, uh, um, uh, she and uh, Evelyn and Walt are developing that tournament. So she would be the most direct person to contact. Okay, so yeah, ask her to give me a call or I'll, I'll write it down. I, I, I think her number must be in the book. <laughs> Okay, okay, thank you. It should be, it should be 10 o'clock on um, July 4th. I think that's what we're looking uh, Wait, it was it's eight earlier. Yeah, 10 o'clock is, yeah. is, is the parade, right? No, 11. 11. Okay. I, Call, I think it's eight. Call yeah. Evelyn. 11. Okay. Yeah. The parade is at 11. The parade is at 11. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 20 years on Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right, the uh, the other thing I, I I'm looking to actually introduce yet another recreational activity to, right. to the uh, town, and that would be um, disc golf, which is um, uh, so certain towns have them um, that they entail having a little basket with uh, and it's like a, there's a well it, it, it's a basket coming out of the ground from a pole and then. Up higher is a bunch of hanging chains to catch these discs, and um, the uh, school actually has a couple of them sitting in their shed, um, and they said that they'd be willing to let the town use them. Um, they uh, and, and I was thinking that big feast over there by the tennis courts, um, which isn't getting them a lot of use right now. Um, you know, we could put, we could start with those two, and if it catches on, people like it. We could, you know, eventually expand it. You know, one, one by one. He really wants and, a nine-hole golf course there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, let's you know see how it goes. Um, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't exactly know where. You know, I'd, I'd have to you know maybe walk the grounds with somebody and and. You know, find out exactly where's what's legal, what's actually town land, what what works with what we're given. Um, but uh, just have to be aware of the softball. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. I, don't, I, don't I don't know what they right, where they use where yeah, they. Don't want anything right to smack in the middle of the field. Right. Um, but softball's not in the middle of the field. No, yeah. they it's have down the, near the river. Well, yeah. they use it up by the tennis court, so we yeah. have two fields there. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a baseball those. field? No. Because baseball fields, the distances aren't right. But they back it in the corner. Right. For right the there. tournament, they use right. two, two fields. fields. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, but there's the a lot Randolph of space. Actually, Randolph has a great 18 hole um, uh, disc <laughs> golf course right next to their pool. And it goes into the woods. It, there's, and it comes out like over by their baseball fields. So there is a mixture of open field with woods, and the, the disc golf in the woods is great. And any kind of terrain is all you all you're really looking for is varied terrain. Um, and and I, I don't know what's available again. If, if we could find wooded areas, that's fine too. That's that's great. What about on the the new park on the north end of town? Is that good enough? Yeah, yeah. I was I was thinking about you know. Well, my, my sort of, I haven't looked into it that much, but my brain says, you know, that would I mean, be a hole in one down there. No, that one. If, if somehow we could get all the way across towards the school, you know, I don't know where all the lines begin and end. I know there's CV oil tanks in the way. Um, yeah, there's sewer line there too. Yeah. Sewer fields we don't want before. No, no. And, uh, um, it, 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 you know, ideally you'd want, a whole course that connects that covers a, a bigger territory, but you know, to begin with, we can start 
You only had two. I think that little park would be a good, great place yeah, to start. The start, yeah. You yeah. can always move it. But yeah. That's the thing. I mean, you, um, they're, they're sort of hard to move once. I mean, to put them in properly, you know, they're long poles. So you want to be, or you want to get a pole bigger, you know, four feet into the ground and cement them in. Um, so there's that. Um, each hole, each basket costs about 150. And you figure, you know, if we get a good group of volunteers, another 50 bucks to put each one in. So how far apart are they? Um, they can vary again, like a golf course. Um, you know, the longer the better. Like, like I, I would say a great hole would be, uh, you know, if you can imagine the tennis court corner to the corner of that field right where that river bends, that would be one nice long hole. And I also noticed that there was some um, there's some foul poles still there, and like you even like temporarily that could even act as a basket. So you could get if you use the foul poles right, you could get three or four. Mm. Poles. That's it. I wondered whether once again talking about ARPA funds and recreation would would that would something like this um can be eligible for some ARP <coughs> funds with um trying to get recreation established in town. For, yeah, but you you told me you think a couple thousand to twenty five hundred dollars maybe. Yeah, a full glorious uh, um the full thing. Whole, yeah, it sounds like finding where to put it would be the challenging part yeah. before you could jump to that big of a. I I think they want to put a couple in and yeah. just give it a try and see if anybody is mm -hmm. interested and yeah, if you want to get a half a dozen people interested, it's kind of a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if they have a couple, that yet, because that's be all our money, that whole field. So we went through big deal to put the septic tanks in down there. A big but deal. It's still a recreation field. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're well, not changing a, the use. Yeah. And you could use, like you said, using the existing foul poles and such, you could, right. you know, that even would though be, it wouldn't be an official basket, really it would there. still, um, it would give you, you could double. Even one easily. on backstops. Yeah. Backstop or the. Um, right. the, the but he um, does have two, two baskets. Yeah. yeah. So I have some. So replace the foul pole with a basket. Mm -hmm. yeah. Aside so, from um, you know getting people within the town interested, it does there, there is a poss possibility that it could promote term tourism um, in that sense. But there, there is a disc golf community out there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's a website on Vermont with all the disc golf courses, and people actually hop from one to another and you know check them out. Um, yeah, so you will get there's a possibility of outer towners for better or worse. Um, I mean, we, uh, you know, I've gone to Randolph and, and the ones up in uh, the closest ones in Randolph. There's one up in uh, Sugarbush and one down by Killington. Um, and they're, they're really nice. It's a lot of fun. It's another one of those things that's for all ages. Um, you know, but a lot of people aren't familiar with it. You know, it's, it's very similar to pickleball in a lot of ways. Um, so, so maybe at the next meeting, seeing as a decision can't be made tonight, mm -hmm. you could bring one of these baskets in, and everybody could see it. Well, they're kind of big and heavy with the full pole. I, I could take a okay. nice picture. Of it. Take a picture. That's good. Yeah. It's even better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that, now that I think about those, I, I wonder if they, they have things that exist that can go around the fall pole that you can kind of wrap. There's probably stuff up there you can just wrap around it and some of that, a couple more holes. I would think so, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's phase two of our recreation um, extravaganza. He's always thinking. All right. I got one final thing to ponder. Um, uh, the town was. Um, emailed by a group up in, uh, I think up in North Montpelier called um, Be the Change. Uh, and with bees being sort of part of a pun, B-E-E, -E, the change. 
and they're into the idea of promoting pollination throughout the state, um, basically getting the bees going. Um, and they've, it's a, it's a large group. They've worked on private and public land um, that, and, and they've contacted all the towns now, and some towns have done this where um, they designate one to two acres of land, and um, it could be scrub land or, you know, whatever it might be, um, or they actually like grassland, you know, grassy land, they like to turn mowed grassland into uh, pollination land. Uh, but I don't know how ideal that would be. Um, but they, they would take the one to two acres and they would come and plow it over, till it, and um, uh, plant the seeds for the pollinators free of charge, no charge at all. The only caveat would be um, they, they put up little signs in there um, that say, you know, this is a habitat for bees and like a little lesson in there or whatever. Um, I think it might be a good um, promotion for Rochester to say, you know, hey, we're ecologically safe or ecologically aware. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I get, I've, I've looked at like maps and stuff. I don't know where this piece of land might be yeah. or if it's appropriate at all. But I thought I'd bounce it against you guys. Um, Julia maybe you can use it to your advantage mm -hmm. one way or another. Susie, so, you have a comment? comment? Yes, yes. Yeah. Julie presented it to you guys a while ago. Yeah, I thought so. As someone who's said, literally deathly allergic to bees, I'm concerned about putting your tennis court or a walking path or a disc golf course. I'd go up and talk to the Forest Service. Would yeah. be appropriate for a multi use. Throw it out there on there. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the Forest Service might have more. Um, I mean, they, they've got that big area there in front, just and they let it grow to wild. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and wild flower there. Yeah. I think that all that area in front is purposeful. There's something in there that they're watching. Yeah. Well, they, they, they burn it off every yeah. year, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we didn't we talk about this once before we thought that little island by Osier's Bend that used to be Osier's Bend there by Sky Hollow. That little hollow there mm -hmm. that's kind mm -hmm. of that's that's taken land. over by the state. Did the state own that now? Yeah. Or? So, so we looked into it for a firehouse. Yep. Yeah. Right. They let you do it there. I, that wouldn't be a bad spot. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't interfere with anybody. Yeah. You couldn't do anything like that down on the water. Do couldn't even touch no. it down there. They don't like activity down there at all. Nothing. Yeah. I don't want activity down there. No, they get us in trouble. <laughs> yeah. right. Not only that, if we ever got contaminated, that'd be right. Oh, millions. Yeah. Be the change. So, uh, yeah, for more information, you can go to be the change, be with two E's, mm -hmm. be the change dot earth. I call the guy up who, you know, he's. He's in Montpelier. Uh, somewhere up there. I, I don't want to say for sure. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. He's yeah. been busy. I'm done. Yeah, it's been very busy. All right. Keep that rec committee going, Norm. Yeah. Um, Susie, did you have something that you wanted to talk about? No, yeah, well, I was asked to do a little more research on uh, bag dispensers. Yep. And that's the information, that's the website that sells everything. Uh, the only thing that might need clarification is just that there are two types of bags. Uh, one comes on a roll, you know, just like your. Um, you know, it's perforated, so you rip it off. And then the other kind 
is it has handles, but the thing is, is you, when you take one, you're literally taking one at a time, as opposed to being able to pull the roll. Mm -hmm. So um, it's actually suggesting it, it's a deterrent for people to just go over there go and, and get 10, 15 yeah, bags 10. at a time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've only had one. Uh, I did have somebody approach me on a walk last week um, to tell me that they thought it's. They couldn't understand why put the bags out if there's not going to be any place to put the bags. And wouldn't we wind up <laughs> wouldn't we wind up with just a, a whole bunch of bags all over? Um, we joked, we talked, and um, and I ended the conversation with I'd rather step in a bag full of droppings than the droppings themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, but that's the only input I've gotten personally. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that makes sense to have them just be the it, one at a time versus a, a roll where yeah. someone could just grab it and start walking with it and make a mess. Yeah. Right. Toilet paper at the park. And as yeah. you can see, it's I think it's two thousand bags, bags for the uh, header It's eight hundred bags, forty dollars, and then the dispenser is. Not $89. Would the dispenser do either the roll or the yes. individual bags? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. All right. Um, on to the new business. We've got the Vermont Emergency Management Community Program. Does anybody know much about that? Is that what the um is that what our guests were Lieutenant bringing to us? Lieutenant Hugh Connell was going to talk about here in the valley. I would say no, it um, looks like the lieutenant didn't really tell us what he was going to be talking about. Emergency management community program. Anybody in Zoom have any hints about what this is? No. No. All right. Well, well um, and there's nothing in the folder over there. I didn't see anything. Gosh, this is all um. Declaration of inclusion. Um, no. Okay. No. So I guess we'll um we'll um see, see if the emergency comes to light and manage it. <laughs> it happens. Um, so um, Tom Allen of LCS Controls are um, working on a fifty kilowatt ground mount solar. Um, installation behind a, um, the building at LCS controls. They had presented that to the planning board at the last meeting and looking for the um, um, certificate of a preferred site because that gives them a um, more um, more kickback from Green Mountain Power. And the consensus was it was a pretty optimal site um, tucked right there behind the building, um, minimally visible from the road and um, just up out of the floodplain and not much happening there. So I, I, you guys have any input on that? You know what I'm talking about, right? LCS. Down up there. Yeah. 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 How much acreage do they have there? Yeah. Do you um, remember? Just I don't remember curiosity. exactly how the they don't go all the way back to the river or anything yeah, like that. No, I don't I don't think so. No. Okay. And that's it doesn't go anywhere cool. near the river. It's all it's kind of trees around it now. It's kind of like a treed in area. And that is on our uh town plan as an accepted area. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that we could give them that um certificate of public good or um preferred site. Preferred they, site. Um, yeah. Do we have to draft a letter for that? Yeah, yeah. That's the thing so we have to do. do that. Okay. 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 So I'd move to to make that designation and yeah. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah, we'll draft up a letter and we can get that to them. Um, I think it's going to be actually um, providing <laughs> juice for um, not only their business but a couple other. Um, homes can buy into it so, so this something. is one large one or an array um, it's, of them? it's a an array of you know on the ground you know, okay kind of a rectangular installation yeah. but is it not, movable 
not no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's just a fixed one from what I saw. Yeah. Okay. Rolls and wait till they get this one. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> people right. have to change their calendars when they take pictures of Liberty Hill Farm. <laughs> so up the <laughs> it was actually like the, um, the way they looked at it. There'd be about a 30 second window if you're driving on Route 100 that if you were looking carefully, you could see it, but otherwise it was going to be yeah, pretty you screwed. can't see them back those buildings. No, you can't. No, yeah. no. It's just down in a yeah. little bit there. There's a sag. Um, so the next on the new business, so we have um, to approve the annual review and report of wastewater system 2022 professional services agreement. You already did that, didn't you? Yeah, I thought that we did do that. Yep. <clears throat> she said that at the time that she made this that you hadn't, but since then you had, so it's all set. Okay, yep. so that's an easy one. All right. Okay, um, Joan, what you, what have you got for us tonight? I'm unmuting. Unmuting. Okay, I was waiting for you to do that. Um, let's see. Well, I'm working with Cooter and Frank on formalizing uh, something called a transportation network inventory, uh, which is something that BTRANS requires in order for us to qualify for their grants. And it's also a good idea to have anyway. Um, basically, it's, it's a, uh, an updatable record of uh, all the uh, infrastructure that we use for, for roads which is, you know, mostly it's, it's culverts. That's the biggest part of it by far. Yeah. But there's also mm -hmm. road surfaces, whether paved or gravel, guardrails, includes bridges, town-owned bridges, uh, and ditching. Uh, so Cooter's already done quite a bit of it. He has uh, an inventory of all the um, culverts. Which he is, you know, it's got information on what condition they're in and the size and you know, whether they're gonna need upgrading within a certain period of time. The only thing that we're not doing right now is estimating the cost of any repairs or uh, replacements because, you know, the cost of things is just so volatile right now. It doesn't really make sense to try and guesstimate what that's gonna be, but eventually that, that information will be plugged in there. Um, so uh, I'll pull together, I met with Frank and Cooter mm, two weeks ago. And so I'm putting together the information in an organized way and it'll stay in a notebook in the town office and get updated from time to time. Um, so uh, thanks to mostly Frank's work, the standby generator is now installed and all that needs to be done at this point is by the end of the month to submit the paperwork to the Department of Public Safety reporting on you know, a cost and looking for asking for reimbursement. Uh, filing the paperwork for that. Um, and then the last thing I'm working on at the moment is uh, Frank's arranging for the removal of a, a buried tank behind the, the office there. And uh, just in the event that there's any contamination that might have occurred, um, he asked me to look into uh, if there's any funding available to take care of uh, remediation of any soil contamination, which can be expensive. Uh, hopefully we won't have any, but uh, just in case, it's good to know if there's anything out there. So far, all I found uh, at the state level is for residential owners. Um, and I've asked Julie to look at our insurance policy because sometimes that's covered in, in those, but I don't know if it is for us. So that would be the first place to look. And then if it's not covered, or even if it is, I'll try and find um, other, if there are any other sources out there if needed. Um, can I ask a question, Joan, please? Yeah, I, sure. I, I didn't hear you correctly. I'm sorry. The standby generator that's been installed, where was that installed? I can't remember. Uh, it's behind the town office. Behind the town office. And the other, other thing that you said right after that, you and Frank were arranging for the removal of a tank. What type of a tank from where? I'm it's, sorry. Uh, it's oil, isn't it, Frank? An old oil yeah. tank? Yeah. yeah, it's the buried heating oil tank. For the town office. Okay, that was that was or was or still is buried by the town it's office. It now. still is buried, and we use it. So okay, we're going to have to get office. it pumped out and uh, get an environmental impact study on it 
with uh, Lincoln Technologies. I visited with them today and um, they're a little bit nervous about <laughs> the EC fiber pad that's partially buried on top of it, which, uh, and I met with EC fiber today too, to see what they felt we could do. And I think we can probably get that out of there. It's just a matter of, we're gonna to have to dig a pretty big hole to slide it out from underneath their pad that they put out there. So <laughs> we, we, it's gonna be a little touchy, but I think it can be done. And what I heard back from Lincoln Technologies was we have a $250 deductible if there's any uh, contamination there and then the feds take over. So oh, okay. it's not going to, it's not going to be a big money problem. The worst problem is going to be getting it out of there and getting a new one in the town office. And that I foresee is the biggest issue. We'll probably have to destroy the dog pen that's out there or take it down move it, yeah, move it or whatever, but that's going to have to be done. So <clears throat> that's about it on that. How large is that tank? Thousand gallon. It's a big one. Yeah, but it's under the the threshold is uh, eleven hundred gallons for the big issues. So we're under that threshold, which makes a deductible easier. And the, I, apparently, it's the same for a resident as it is a municipality, according to what she told me. Right. Uh, Beth, High school that, is that, larger uh, than eleven hundred. Yeah, yeah, it's like exactly. ten thousand. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a lot bigger yeah. unit. Joan, what is the update on obtaining the uh, reimbursement funds for the Bethel Mountain Road project? Bethel Mountain Road, we got that quite a while ago. That's all paid. Okay, thank you. All right, is that it, Joan? It is. Yep. The, right. the other thing, Joan, is uh, I talked with Cricket today and we went over to the, the wall here by the brook and uh, that's come in another couple inches. So uh, I think we better uh, see, she was gonna talk with uh, Larry Strauss to see if that's a, if we could use the ARPA funds for that. And she wasn't sure whether or not we'd have to put that back out the bid. Um, so you may wanna check touch base with her to see if that's what we have to do or not. I would think so. I mean, that was, when did we do that? Was it last year, a year ago? Yeah, yeah, a year ago. Yeah, she say, was under the everything doubled by now. Yeah, well, she was yeah. under the impression that we could we could just offer a rebid to the three people that bid, but I don't. She did, wasn't sure that she could do that. So maybe you can be in mm. touch with her and yeah. we can work that out. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical just because if we're using federal funds, you know, I want to make sure it's absolutely done without any. Yeah. Uh, raising right. questions. So I think it's given that it's about a year or will be by the time we do it. Uh, <clears throat> the, um, I, I think just go out to bid again. Yeah. Well, would, would you take that up with her and sure. figure that out? Yep. 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 Okay. Yep. Thank you. So do you have a time frame for that or do you? I'm sorry. Um, I, as the sooner we can do it, I think the better off we are. I mean, if we have to rebid that, you know, I don't know what people are going to, you know, whether we can get anybody to even bid it, you know, they might be real busy. So it may have to sit for another year. Who knows? But I'd, I'd want to get it as soon as we possibly can. Do you need to verify that ARPA funds will pay for it first or just go ahead and do it? Yes, that's what I, I we need to do that first. All to right. Verify. ARPA funds are okay to spend on that. Okay, so I'll wait to hear from you then, and then uh, and I'll talk to Cricket in the meantime. But talk, uh, talk to Cricket in the meantime, or, yeah. or I can call Larry and make sure. Pat, you know, you wouldn't know, would you, if that was yeah, a good we, use? We, we could use it for that, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so I think we're going to be able to use that. So, you know, I, I'd talk with Cricket about the doing the bid again or whatever we have to do there mm -hmm. okay okay thank you 
Let me let me rephrase my question, Joan. I was referring to the FEMA funds from the April 15, 2019 flood. Do, oh, do that. Those? that. Yeah, that. The <laughs> ones we haven't, I don't think it's, we've gotten. Uh, we have in process two payments. One is, if you remember, the 75% of the 75% for the incomplete roads. And at the same time, they're processing the full payment for that were due for the um, complete roads. And I was in touch with the person who's processing that last week. She was out for a while because she had an unexpected death in the family, but she got back to me and apologized and said that she was working hard on it and it should be very soon. So I'm not gonna predict when, but I know the actual payment is in process. Okay, the sooner the better. Mm, you bet. Yeah, we're right now. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Joan. Okay. Uh, didn't mean to cut you off. Are you done? Yep. She's done. All right, she's on done. Mute. Okay. Video on mute. I'm done. <laughs> You're done. All right. Um, I don't see anybody here from the library. Does anybody have any um Input on that, no, um, or the highway. Terry's here from the utilities world. Got any exciting news from us? Going to walk around next week. Yeah. So that didn't so, happen last year, did it? Did, did you get the what the counters or what was it that were messed up? Yeah, actually, we had to relocate the downtown. Why? Yeah. Been working for six months, but ended up not raise it. Oh, really? That's all it was? Yep. Huh, okay. As far as the highway goes, I'm, I'm going to meet with Chris Matrick on Friday. About that gate? About the gate at Bingo. Mm -hmm. And John's okay with them. He's, he's not really okay with it, but <laughs> rather than make them move that gate to have to put two gates up, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, so... If I can get them to enlarge a, that last campsite they got, that's right there, where we could turn around so he doesn't have to get out every time to unlock that gate to plow so where he could turn around. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the only reason why I'm not so uh, fired up to have a move it is simply because we don't plow that road unless they're logging up there, right. which so their logging is minimal. An yeah. yeah, and so if, if they're willing to do something like that, John's would accept that, so um, I'm I'm good with that. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but uh, you yeah, know, if you wanted to move it, it's just reasonable. I mean, yeah. they cemented this one in, and it's steel. I mean, that would there would be a challenge to get it out of there, mm -hmm. and, and plus it would they'd have to put up another one because they got to block both roads. So. Yeah, but but I'll see what he has to say, and All right, and yeah. go from there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we put our counters on Bethel Mountain Road for traffic. Rita Cito will get back to us in a couple weeks with the information. She'll process that. It'll give us idea of truck traffic and how many vehicles and mm -hmm. all that for that road. Truck traffic dropped down a lot since they was closed last year. Yeah. Oh wow. I noticed it had. I know still. The, was there <laughs> yeah, a big uh tractor trailer truck go over there today mm -hmm. i thought i saw saw me turned in and went around the park and then yep. i said i wonder if he's going up over the hill well one came down too the counters are out there so but they aren't nearly as many as they used to be no there isn't they're still there but not, yeah right right nowhere near, near yeah. nowhere is near what used right to be. So the counters can determine whether or not it's a big truck or not. Probably yeah, by the weight, they the they weight. can do that, yeah. and they and can the wheels and the spacing of the wheels. Yeah, yeah, and they, and they she's going to tabulate all that information, and she kind of made me feel like we could do whatever we wanted there if we wanted to drop that speed limit down, mm -hmm. we could do that. Um, I you know that's up kind of up to everybody else, but I 
I just want it to be kind of consistent with Bethel. You know, they're at 40 sense, yeah. and, and we're at 50. It doesn't make any sense to me. Not that people are going to drive 40 down through mm -hmm. there. They're going to get a speed bump. The now. speed limit before the road was repaired was not 50, correct? It was always 50 because it wasn't posted. Because it, it wasn't, wasn't posted. posted so default. they put if, the signs up. If you have a black top road and it's not posted, it's considered 50 miles an hour. Right. And that might not have had many signs there. No. And then all of a sudden, so now we have signs. Yeah. That is the ordinance. Read. That's how the ordinance reads: is fifty miles oh, an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it is. I just ordinance. didn't know that they yeah. didn't have. We didn't have speed limit signs. The, the only before. road that I know of in town that we don't have posted properly is Brook Street, because mm -hmm. we don't have an ordinance for that thirty mile an hour zone. And that's the only one I know of. That I researched. I would not suggest doing 50 up through there. No, no. but that, that's from the corner of. <laughs> I would. I've been there. That's from the corner up to where it's not paved, yeah. where, where it turns to dirt, yeah. that 30 miles an hour. Yeah. But that's the only one we well, don't have. Keep all those speed on. bumps in there. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. Have yeah. <laughs> you were here for that part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, is um, Jeff Gephardt here, energy coordinator? Yes. You got a report? Yes, I am. All righty. Hi, Jeff. Uh, not very much to report, but we were looking to try to pin down uh, Green Mountain Power on, uh, you know, the, uh, the any costs associated with electric vehicle charging uh, that would be uh, Rochester's responsibility as opposed to GMP. Uh, today, uh, Sarah Lublin Peary responded, GMP will do 100% of what is needed to connect the charger, service upgrade, trenching, conduit, slab, uh, all of the charger connection requirements. The only thing she can think of that the town might need to pay for is if we wanted to add lighting or another amenity at the location. She referenced when we were considering the fire station um, a discussion about uh, upgrading bathrooms, though I don't think that uh, pertains at all down at uh, the parking lot. No. Ride. no. Um, the, uh, there, the level three charger is to be delivered um, and they expect to begin uh, installation this fall. Um, there will be two um, level three fast charging ports and there will be two level two um, uh, moderate uh, overnight kind of charging. Uh, um, ports as well. Some four vehicles could charge at a given time. Huh. Um, okay. What with the uh, fall installation plan, um, the um, Valley Energy and uh, Climate Action Committee is, is considering a fall um, electric vehicle demonstration day um, and uh, wondering what the uh, select board feels about the possible use of the park for such an event in either September or early October. Um, what I would envision is that we would uh, seek to get, manu get dealers of uh, electric vehicles to bring vehicles to town for test drives and we would seek to have um, uh, those the 32 people in the valley that have electric vehicles um, bring their cars down and, and be able to talk to uh, people who are interested. Um, is that a, a park use that uh, with more detail and dates and such, the, the board would be inclined to allow? Yeah, I would think so. Probably yeah. not doing donuts on the park, but you know, no. around the park. We with do some... allow vehicles to park along the edges of the park. Yeah, right. That's uh, that's all I'm thinking of is just uh, yeah. to park along yeah. the edges. And and I hope to actually recruit a couple people that have um, antique EVs uh, from uh, the 20s. Uh, get a little more interest cool. in it for that. And when the other thing too, anytime we do an electric vehicle uh, demonstration, I'd like to also bring to the attention of folks in the Valley, uh, the Mileage Smart program, which is a program that is designed to help uh, lower income um, residents acquire um, used vehicles that have good miles per gallon ratings. Mm -hmm. I'd like to reserve the right to say that if it did seem to you that it was getting 
uh, to be a large event, then maybe we would want to consider the ball fields. Um, although driving can't, can't get down there on ball fields car really. Oh, I've got it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's too wet. Excuse me. Um, where, where we did the lawnmower thing, um, but yeah, I just hate to see a lot of people show up without a lot of places to park if we're going to have EV vehicles parked there. Well, and if you use people the parking. park, possibly close off the road around the park or a portion of it, mm -hmm. because if they're parking along the side, you have a safety factor. We can do that. Um, then a good place to park. No. Wait, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, Martha. Um, I just wanted to say if if you were doing it in September, Jeff, Harvest yeah. Fair is the Saturday after Labor Day. But I mean, if that and so it couldn't be that. And we already, you know, we do it on the park. But any other date, you know, isn't already taken as far as I know. Yep. Yeah, we certainly are aware of the Harvest Fair and, and the okay, committee will want you. to have a resource table at that event. Uh, yeah, that well, that was a suggestion. As too, we did last year. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, you could uh, promote the following, you know, car event at the Harvest Fair. It would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I'll, I, you know, if, if we wind up having a phenomenal success in recruiting tons of people, um, I'll certainly bring that to the board's attention as, and of course, as we get uh, a date pinned down um, for further review and approval. Yeah. All right. No, Thank sounds, you. Sounds good. Yep. That's it. All right. Thank you. Um, under old business, we had the re review of the master financial policy. And guys got much input on I, that i read it before and i made the changes i yeah, felt we needed and, and the rest of it i no, it I'm seems pretty it. it seems it's a good. policy it's a policy it's all there it's yeah. all there yeah yeah so there's so a lot i didn't of really have any other changes and you know for that um the appointments we still have a few voids in their appointment list did you um, guys chance you to get read four, the, okay. uh, Go ahead, Frank. Um, did you guys get a chance to read the tree thing? I did not. Did so not, not that. Yeah, I that that. that's got to come back on my radar. I think in the folder too, there's like a couple of other positions that are highlighted that need appointments, perhaps. The the constable there. The second constable so, is optional. We're not. We don't sure have to have it. Yeah, that's right. I just missed it. No, but this yeah. guy here. Yeah, so down in that area. I think it's right around there. Master financial policy. No. I had browsed through the the document for the tree there it is there the warden um, when we first presented it yeah it's really is that tree warden and the second constable that is um, yeah. so you're not going to go with a second constable not until we find someone that really shows interest in it it's not not um, necessary okay. Hey, it looks like you decided to take on the role of tree warden for the time being. The, as the but select Frank, board. Frank suggested yeah. that we, we get it. Um, this guy, uh, this is that Hugh, <laughs> Lieutenant Hugh right here. He's a, more or less the emergency management with Michaela Richardson. Yeah, he mm -hmm. wasn't sure that he would be able to make it. So that's, so that's right. all that was And same with her. <laughs> well, um, so. Anything else anyone's got to speak about tonight? Did you guys decide to take on the tree warden or are you still researching that for the three well, of you? Well, I think that and um, I think you did that last time. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. We should, you voted to do it. We might as well go ahead and vote again. Yeah, let's vote that, that we will um, 
the chair, the tree warden, as one of the responsibilities of the select board. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> we have met the warden, and he is us. <laughs> Excuse me, may I ask one, one, one question? Sure. Um, right before that, where it says review master financial uh, policy, am I correct that you... I don't. I didn't hear you say anything about giving formal approval to it, or did you not have to do that? I think you're still waiting for. We have to hear from Nathan. I think. Yeah. We're we? having okay. a meeting about it coming up. Correct? Yeah, we have a meeting yeah. coming up, so it's still in in process. Eighteenth or something. Okay. That, in the process meeting. Me. Meeting on the uh, on the eighteenth of this month, right? The, the meeting on the 18th is for the capital plan. This is okay. the master okay. financial policy that the town has to adopt. And I'm not sure what the ramifications are, how we go about adopting that. Um, but I think you gals, that's how you deal with petty cash, how you deal with, with bills and all that. Yeah. It, in the capital plan meeting is... Uh, May 18th at 4 p.m. with Kevin Geiger, and that's to redo the plan that was last updated in 2015. Yes, it, to discuss the review. To, to discuss what how we're going to go about this. And that's kind of what Joan and John and I started out doing was filling in some of that. So Joan's been working on that, and John's been doing the culverts inventory, and we're we're pretty good. We want to make the capital plan a little more reflective of reality and not, <laughs> yeah, you know, something that pie in the sky that we can't ever attain anyway. So yeah, um, it's going to take a little time to do that, but hopefully we'll get started on it and then it'll go a little bit smoother once we get into it. But it, it'll be probably a lot, most of the summer that we'll have off and on things going on with that so in rewriting that so there really isn't anything news about reviewing a master financial policy basically what you're doing is reviewing the capital plan there, there are two different plans okay so if i said yeah, reviewing the master financial policy was still in progress would that be correct yes that's perfect okay thank you sorry to interrupt you and thank you for for right. answering my question yep all right, um, we've got I entertain a motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay.